Okay, so today we're going to talk about heat transfer and enthalpy change. These are pages 302 to 305 in your textbook. Uh, it's just very short material and it's only theory material. I expect that you watch this video and do the homework by the time we start the class on Friday so we can start doing some math problems. Okay, enthalpy change. What exactly is enthalpy? The basic definition of enthalpy is a measure of the total energy of a thermodynamic system. A thermodynamic system consists of a system and the surroundings. So enthalpy change, and this is noted by delta H, is the difference in enthalpies of reactants and products. Okay, so we're just pretty much measuring energy of a system and measuring energy of the surroundings and we're seeing if anything had happened. Delta H can be positive or negative and this goes on to ideas about endo and exothermic. These are really important. If you're not familiar with the terms, I would suggest you review your material and relearn it again because this is going to come up for the whole unit now. Okay, law of conservation of energy. So what does enthalpy have to do with this? The basic idea is if you have enthalpy of a system, it's going to be equal to the heat of the surroundings. Now what this means is in with the simple English is this point right here. Whatever heat or energy the system loses or gains, it's equally offset by the surroundings. Okay, so whatever you gain or you lose in the system is going to be offset by the surroundings. So energy cannot be created, cannot be destroyed. It's just being changed from one form to another and it's just being transferred from one place to another. So if you look at this example right here, H2O gas, when it, this is a process called sublimation, so it goes from a gas to a solid, it releases a lot of heat. So this process is called sublimation. S-U-B-L-I-M, sublimation. So an incredible amount of heat is released from the system. Now let's say we have a tank of air, and this tank of air or water vapor suddenly becomes solid water or ice. A lot of heat is, re is released from the system, so from the tank, and we can say that it's absorbed by the surroundings. So everything that's not the tank absorbs the heat. Now this reaction is exothermic, and it's exothermic because the system released heat. We didn't add heat into the system, the system actually released it. So when a system releases energy, we call this an exothermic reaction. Okay, there's three different types of enthalpy changes, physical, chemical, and nuclear. It's really only the first two that we're worried about in this course. Physical changes, that was the previous example right here that we did about uh, water. Chemical bonds are not broken, we're just looking at intermolecular forces are being broken. So we've covered this before. So in the case of water, we have hydrogen bonds that have to be overcome and we have London forces, um, any kind of dipole dipole interactions, these things. So the actual bonds themselves, they remain as they are. They don't break apart. We're just looking to overcome forces. In a chemical change, here now energy is being used to change chemical bonds. So we're restructuring bonds. So let's say we had um, a reaction between sodium and chloride to form sodium chloride. Here we have bonds that are being formed. So this would be a chemical change. And there is a different type of enthalpy change which is much bigger than physical. Okay? Because remember what I said, the energy used to overcome chemical bonds is much greater than the energy used to overcome forces. Okay? Bonds are much stronger than forces. And then finally our third category, just because it was in the textbook, nuclear uh, changes. So this is energy used to overcome forces between protons and nuclei. So in the case of atomic bombs, uh, but this is mostly physics and nobody cares about physics. Okay, so this diagram, this was taken right out of your textbook. On this side, here we have the system. Okay. Now we say the system has high potential energy. So let's say, for example, we have gasoline. Within gasoline, the carbon and hydrogen bonds, there's a lot of energy, a lot of high potential energy that's stored. Now let's say we burn that gasoline, what happens to that potential energy is that it drops, okay? Because the energy between carbon oxygen bonds in CO2 and hydrogen oxygen bond in H2O is much less than what we started off in our hydrocarbon, okay? So the reaction went to completion, we went from high potential energy to low potential energy. Now this energy doesn't just escape, it doesn't disappear, we didn't create energy and we didn't lose anything. While we were releasing this exothermic energy the system so the sorry the surrounding was picking it up so here you go high kinetic energies which is being absorbed by the surroundings okay 
and this is a really practical example for any of you that have ever burned anything so even if you turn on your stove um, high potential energy is lost from the fuel so it goes down here and everything else that's not the system so pretty much if you're standing next to the stove you consider the surroundings you pick up this high kinetic energy okay at the end of the day the energy actually never changed it was constant you started off with X amount of energy you finished off with X amount of energy okay nothing changed nothing was created nothing was destroyed and finally that concludes our section tomorrow we're gonna cover section 5.2 which has a lot of math in it so we can take some time out in class to work that out right now for homework page 305 questions number three four and five essentially it's the same question it's just asking you different things this will solidify your understanding of systems and surroundings and what is exothermic and what is endothermic. So please do that and then we can start on 5.2 on Friday. Thank you very much.